Welcome to California Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz and we are joined by Tony Mendoza. He is one of the newest members of the California State Senate. Sir, congratulations. A tremendous victory and I'm saying that a heartfelt way because at the end you were a targeted race and there were some folks that believed that you could actually lose a seat that was on no one's radar until two, three weeks out. That's great, Brad. And thank you again for the sure. compliments. I, it was a tough race, but uh, we got it done. We uh, you know, we had to fight back. It was a million dollars against us, a just neg negative campaign, a right. smear campaign, the ugliest that I've ever seen in my particular area. And so we were very disappointed, but, you know, we we're very happy that the results came out the way they did. I think people saw, saw it, for what it for what it was. Right. And... Uh, that what really was, helped us. What was fascinating, I was, I'm that guy who looks at returns every 10 minutes, <laughs> and I was watching returns in your race and others, and the early returns for supporters of Tony Mendoza were a little scary. I mean, you mm -hmm. were behind. Yeah, we, were, we lost the absentee war. Uh, you know, the absentees came out early, uh -huh. and that was about four weeks out before the election, right. and that's where the negative campaign started, mm -hmm. and they started targeting the absentee voters with all the negative campaign. I mean, we got nine negative hit mailers against me. We had uh, 250000 worth of TV ads that they bought against me. They bought uh, paid uh, phone bankers against me. Everything was, again, just negative, negative. Why your seat? Why you? I know that may seem like a strange question, right. but... Look, I mean, you're not a particularly controversial figure. You know, you've run a pretty clean shop when you were in the assembly. You're a dad. You know, you're a teacher. What is it about your seat that all of a sudden it became ripe for ambush? It was my predecessor. Right. Uh, Ron Caldron had just got indicted. He's still mm -hmm. facing a uh, verdict here and uh, trial mm -hmm. here. And so he, that, that kind of prepared the, the, this fight. Right. Again, with the fuel that they needed. But you're not related to Ron Calderon. No, we're not. And I, I mean, was, we and know we, what happened to yeah. his son, Ian, not his son, his nephew, Ian. He almost lost, but did win. We know his father ran for judge and lost. So the Calderon name is, you right. know, it, it's tricky right now. So they try to associate me w with him when in reality, I've never really had a good relationship with him. Right. Over the years. And, you know, they came after me when I was in the seventh. Right. So we've always had a really uh, not so good right. relationship. But the, for them, it was... Oh, they're all the same right. former legislator. They're all it, at some point. At some point, I actually got a little bit racist. They I was going to ask portrayed me as a as a cholo, as a gang member. Put me really? with it was pretty bad. But you know what? It, it, it was but that your opponent is of Latino descent. Or, I mean, your no, former he, opponent. No, well, he's Cuban, but he doesn't consider himself Latino. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, but you know, it doesn't matter. Right. I just think just the, the the fact that he used that or or tried to portray it in that way, uh, they were just desperate. They win at all means necessary. Right. I mean, they the, the whole. From the structure, from the top down, they had uh, spies actually come to our campaign office. I love Paid that. employees come in and, I love that. and we're like, wait, we know you. And we had, right. they got on the phone, they were pretending to make calls for us. And we're like, we called them out and we kicked them out. But it was that, they, were, they were that desperate and they were that mean spirited. What's remarkable though, is that in some ways you did dodge a bullet because mm -hmm. when you look at the success of the Republican Party in California on the legislative side, the state legislative side, they did well. I mean, mm -hmm. they had two s truly targeted Senate races. The Republicans won both. They had five truly targeted assembly races. The Republicans won four. So, I mean, it was a good day for the Republicans, not on the congressional side. In the end, the four targeted uh, d uh, congressional seats, the Democrats so, wind yeah. up pulled it out. Yeah. They pulled it out. You're, you're right. And I think they, 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 they were successful. We were able to push that back. And I think the, what made the difference is that the, those, those last two weeks, we were able to get a lot of volunteers, a lot of teachers, a lot of labor folks. They came out and supported my efforts and helped me get the, void out, the voice, right. the vote out for the election, but also to put the right message out there, the correct message, this is all false right. advertisements, they're just negative ads. And how was, if you know, how was turnout in your state Senate district overall? Because we know statewide turnout was abysmal. Yeah. And so do you have a sense if you drove up turnout? You no, know, I, I, well, I know we brought a lot more people out on the election day. I haven't uh, looked at the final numbers. Fair enough. Because they're still coming out, actually. Right, we had a, yes. Our, our numbers yes. went up yesterday even more. Right. So we're not over, now, like, almost right. 5,500 now. Right. Above, which is great. Uh, but they're changing. But we're trying to look at the fi last final numbers. I think we did good in the sense of getting people out to vote. So you're entering a body, the California State Senate, that had a tough year. Three members of that body, all members of your party, were indicted in three different incidents. They, it wasn't like an app scam where it was all connected. You know, one for 
a residency issue, one for gun running, mm -hmm. and Mr. Calderon for uh, shenanigans, I guess we could call it, uh, uh, mm -hmm. financial dealings. So what do you do? I mean, that's tricky. Well, again, you gotta remember, in our yeah. area, we haven't had a senator for over two years present at all. Yeah. So we, first of all, we create that presence and bring, build that trust right. with the community and say, we're here to serve, we're here to help, we're gonna change the way things have been working up there. And that we're trying to create that image. But are you gonna look towards ethics reform? Because we know the prior Senate did look towards it. Many bills were passed. The governor actually vetoed a few. Mm -hmm. And so are there certain ethics reforms you believe that you could or should champion? Yes, I, I, there's a bill that I introduced when I was in the Senate that didn't get very far. Okay. Because at that time there was no, no issue. Not, the scandals were not right. out. But now this that bill directly relates to what we were, you were just mentioning. Right. Uh, the bill that I'm going to introduce uh, when I uh, get right. sworn in will be uh, based on ethics, mm -hmm. based on the fact that if you're an elected person, an elected body, if a person before you that's going to get a contract or wants to do business with whatever mm -hmm. entity you're elected on, they that elected person cannot vote on that issue if it benefits a family member. Right. So we're going to we're going to define what a family member is. And what's surprising is you'd think that'd be a law already. I mean, it is in cities. It, it, it is a law, but it only says if you have uh, you only prohibited if you have a financial relationship with them. So if I live with my brother or if I live with my dad or I own a hot property with them, then I have oh, to abstain. I understand. But if I have no financial relationship with them, I could vote on my on a contract for my dad or yeah, a brother oh, or a son. And I say, wait a minute, it doesn't matter if you have a financial relationship or mm -hmm. not. That is still a relative of yours, and you should not be voting on it. At least, at least for, uh, don't give that impression. And I think the law, even though the law allows that, I don't think it should. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to define what a relative is, and we want to make sure that we include that uh, uh, conflict of interest, even though you don't have a financial relationship with that person. What other issues would you like to tackle as a member of the California State Senate? As our viewers probably know, you were in the assembly for six years, took two years off because of term limits, and now you're coming back. So what other issues? I think what's important in our community, I represent like 19 communities, uh -huh. uh, bringing redevelopment back. Uh -huh. Redevelopment is such <laughs> a big economic tool that our communities and our cities can use to build those jobs and build that infrastructure that they sorely need. What's fascinating about redevelopment is if you think about it, you know, it's a program. I heard this cliche, you know, it's a Republican, it's a program that benefits Republicans that is drafted by Democrats <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's the developers that get the benefits of the redevelopment funds, but it's the Democrats who like it because it improves blighted neighborhoods. Yes. But yet the main Democrat, Jerry Brown, He's the one who basically got rid of redevelopment. Right. And so I understand you're looking to bring it back, but how do you get the most important Democrat of all to sign on? You're right, and I think uh, our governor is, uh, he's a tough governor. I think he's very reasonable. Right. I think he's very moderate, middle of the road. Right. And I, I think that, I don't, he wanted to get rid of it for financial reasons, right. but now the economy is doing a lot better. I hope that he sees that the, with the improvement of the economy that he would allow redevelopment to come back in a different format, sure. I think he had issues with uh, abuses that were occurring and, through some agencies. And let me ask you about that, sir, because there's no doubt that you know one bad apple can spoil the entire lot. And if you look at redevelopment, God, there were I think 500 redevelopment agencies, and you know the vast majority of them were doing great work. But there were a few bad apples, you know, using it for golf courses and whatever it may be. So how do you create? the optics in such a way that those aren't put up as poster children for a reason not to bring back redevelopment. The cities themselves, the association that represents mm -hmm. the city themselves, mm -hmm. they don't want to see those abuses back because right. they know that that is what made redevelopment go away. Right. Uh, I know the governor will not sign anything that has, that permits those kind of abuses to occur again. I myself wouldn't want to see that uh, as well. But you know what, there's a lot of positives that can occur with redevelopment. Uh, there's the housing opportunities, Affordable there's jobs, housing. yeah, there's jobs opportunity because local construction jobs are going to be occurring, uh, mixed use opportunities right. where you can do improved uh, light. Right, exactly. Uh, the biggest issue is improving light, so. His name is Tony Mendoza, a member of the California State Senate. Congratulations again, sir. A tremendous victory. My name is Brad Palmer, and this is California Edition.